Good. So uh, one interesting thing so far has been uh, Zach Sealer's playing a lot more percentage defensive snaps than a year ago. Has that been purely a matchup issue? Has it been a determination that you made that he needs to play more because he, he because he's a productive player, or is it both? I, I think it's probably a little bit of both. Uh, you know, obviously we feel very comfortable when Zach's out on the field in all situations, and like we do with all of our packages, um, we we try to put guys in, in good spots. Um, and Zach's been a productive player for us. Uh, I would say he he works very hard at his craft, and I think he's shown constant improvement since the day he's been here. And I think he's continuing to improve, and I think he's really becoming a um, – like, we have a lot of leaders on defense, and there's a lot of, you know, I know people talk about leadership a lot, but, like, you know, there's different ways you can lead, and I think we have a, a good group of, of men that uh, work hard, and I think Zach, by example of the way he works and the way that he produces on the field, I think guys have a lot of respect for him. You go from Lamar Jackson to Josh Allen now this week. Um, is there any – they seem so opposite quarterbacks, one – speed but they both can, but the, the fundamentally they both do a lot of the same things right uh yeah both of them extremely talented um you know i would say as far as running or throwing like both of them can run like running backs both of them can throw the ball 80 yards um but schematically i would say they're two different systems uh and and they they try to attack in different ways um so yeah we'll have a big challenge for sure this week i mean um uh, and uh we're looking forward to it, but I would say there's not a lot of carryover from scheme from uh, one one team to the other. As you look at film right now with Josh Allen, and then you look back to you know a couple of years back, you know, working first, you know, kind of scouting him and you know for, for games, where is he improving the most? Uh, I, w I would say overall total game. Um, you know, I, I think this guy, you know, when he when he first came into the league, I think. Uh, you could obviously see the talent. I think his control and comfort and command of the offense is much better. I, and I think it's continuing to improve. And I think it's been at a high level for a while. Uh, but I think you can see a constant improvement with him. I think he uh, knows what he wants to be in. I think he feels very comfortable with the offense. I think he knows uh, more of what defenses are giving him. And not that he didn't know that a year or two ago. I think it's just improved over, uh, over time for him. And I think his comfort uh, level of commanding the offense, running the offense, and feeling comfortable in it. And then, you know, his ability to make plays, you know, whether it's with his arms, whether it's with his eyes reading things, or whether it's with his legs, um, I, I think he's been very productive. And that, take, go ahead. What's your take on uh, Jalen Phillips to start this season? Uh, he's been very active as far as tackles and such in numbers, but uh, some advanced metrics say he has a high pass rush win rate. Uh, just what's your feel for the way he started this season? Uh, in all aspects? Well, I think it's the same with it, with everybody. Like you know, uh, obviously, you know, uh, we're we're happy to be where we're at from a win standpoint. Um, but you know, I think each week there's things that we can build on that we've done well, and I think there's things that we can get corrected to try to improve. And you know, I, I think Mike's done a great job with the team in saying that you know each week we need to get better than we were the week before. And I think there's things that you can point out that, okay, this was better, but we need to improve on this. And I think that's what we're striving to do. And I think all players kind of fit into that category of there's some good things out there. There's some things that, that we can get a little bit better. And, you know, sometimes, you know, depending on what the scheme is, it, like if you're doing your job, you may not be the guy getting the production. That's why, like, to us, it makes very little, you know, hey, this guy got this, this guy got that. You know, it's, it's a team game. And, like, this is going to be a big week for us to play complementary football. I mean, the Buffalo Bills, they're, they're good in all three phases. And, you know, uh, obviously defensively we got to do a good job for Miami uh, being holding up our end on the defensive side of it. And then, you know, uh, the offense and the kicking game, like, we, we all need to play a complementary game to get done what we want to get done. So do you think he is doing well, whether the ball's coming to him or opening it up for someone else to make play? I think he's playing within the scheme, and I think it can get better, and I think he's done some good things. I think like that's like everybody. you know. I, I mean, we're week two into the season. I mean, to sit here and say, hey, this is, this is it. This is what it is. This is not this. This is good. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think it's an evolving thing that we're, that we're all trying to get better, and I think that he has done some good things, and I, you know, I think he'll continue to do some good things, and I think he'll get better at some things. 
Mike's told us, or Mike told us that Cater had kind of a look in his eye uh, before the second half, and that's kind of led to him playing more in the second, in the third, and fourth quarters. I was wondering if there was a more maybe technical reason why you all decided to go with Cater there on the outside. Well, I, th I think for for us every week, it's all kind of you, you put a plan in place, especially for young guys. You put a plan in a place. You you try not to overload them unless you have to out of necessity, uh, and uh, you know, and then then you see how things are going, and then you see their demeanor, and their, I think that's probably what Mike was referring to on how things are, and then you, ultimately you choose to do what you think's best in that situation. And like again, I mean, uh, just the familiarity of the position, the corner position over the years. You know, a lot of times we looked at those guys like uh, baseball pitchers. You know, like this guy's a good matchup for this guy. This guy's a good matchup for this guy. What what may work for one week won't work for the next. But like I said, I think when you're talking with guys that have relatively limited to no experience, like I think you, when you have the luxury to, you know, kind of, you know, get the reps going at a rate that, you, that you're comfortable with to kind of bring them along, I, I think that's a good thing to do. Um, you know, so, um, you know, it's a week to week thing for us. Uh, we got a lot of guys competing in the back end. We're, we're excited uh, with the improvement that we're seeing some guys make. And, and we're definitely grateful for the experience that all of them are getting because it's a long season. And at some point we're going to need them. And I, I think that's that's the thought in mind, you know, over years, especially a lot of times with uh, I mean, I can just remember over my career, sometimes, you know, rookies, you'd put them in. You know, and you take them out as fast as you put them in, but you're trying to get them out there, get some of that playing experience, and you know, and then the more the more productive you are with your opportunities, obviously the more opportunities will come up. But I, I think it's a calculated process, and I think it's a week to week thing. And then there is an element of, you know, how are things going? You know, is the guy ready to go? I, I think that was probably something that Mike was referring to. If I can follow up, uh, no. uh, I know sorry. Got to see Blake hey, Barry. Oh, I'm sorry. Marcel, yeah. do you want to fish? Sorry about that. Yeah, just to follow up, uh, it, where is, I guess, then the line when you're playing rookies and you're getting that experience between allowing them to kind of learn on the fly and learn on their feet mm -hmm. versus, oh, oh, okay, you're doing more harm than good? Oh, wait, can you ask that? Where, where is the line between letting guys learn and make mistakes on the field versus having to, like you said, pull them as fast as you put them in? Yeah, I, I think, uh, well, again, it, it's probably uh, situation-based, game-based, um, you know, and part of it is, like, you know, is, is it a favorable matchup or are you putting them in a tough spot, you know, which, you know, sometimes you're always trying to put them in favorable matchups, but, it, you know, the, the cards don't always work that way. So I think there's a lot of variables that go into that. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you're trying to build – uh, from week to week and understand that, you know, if you're a rookie coming into the NFL, it's a lot different season, no matter whether you played at uh, Alabama or Texas A&M Commerce, it's a lot different than the season that you just just went through. And so I think, you know, you have a short term um, like goal in mind and you also are always thinking of the long term goals and implications as you go. And then the whole time, the most important thing is you're trying to win the game at hand. Josh, you guys have used Xavier to shadow receivers in the past. What are the pros and cons of that, and what goes into that decision? Uh, again, a lot of it's matchup-based, uh, how, how you feel like he can do in that matchup. The other thing that to consider is the guys around him and the other matchups. So, again, there's a lot of variables that go into it week to week, um, you know, uh, some games you may go, okay, well, let's do this with him, and then everybody else will do this. And then maybe if you play him again, you go, okay, well, let's do something a little bit different and then shift this to this. So I think there's just so many variables into it. But ideally, like what you're trying to do is you're trying to put the guys in the best spots uh, that you possibly can. But I think it, it depends on individual matchup and then what you're doing with the other guys around them. I realized that last week, obviously, Jerome played quite a bit outside. You had to land in the Duke inside. Uh, that being said, it was a little bit eyebrow-raising that Andrew didn't play any defensive snaps. It, what's going on with him? Is, the, is it the recovery from the appendix? Is it a case of Melvin Ingram has simply beaten him out? Where, where does he stand? What's contributed to the playing time plummeting? 
Yeah, well, I would say, yeah, I mean, like, the fact that uh, the fact that he's come from come back from a, an appendix surgery in like two and a half weeks is pretty impressive in and of itself. I would say he's working his way back. I would say he's getting his weight back, which I feel like he's, he's getting that pretty much back to where it was. Uh, it's very impressive that his mental makeup and his desire to get back as fast as he has, you know, and then there's a lot of times like, you know, just because everybody's available to you doesn't mean you want to rush him out there. So, you know, I'm, you know, he's been a productive player for us in the past. I'm sure he'll be a productive player for us this year. Um, you know, there's nothing like, oh, okay, well, you know, we can't use him in this situation. And then a lot of times, like I said, it's, it's really a matchup based thing or how, how we feel that it's going into the week, the guys that we want to play. But like, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about Van Ginkle and his, his mental makeup to come back as fast as he did. I mean, two and a half weeks after having your opinion, like you, you literally just got opened up and he's coming back two and a half weeks. It's a pretty tough kid. On your uh, nightly conversations with your dad, how much is Josh Allen's name or Bill's offense, what they're doing? Uh, yeah, they, uh, well, this week it's been more about the Granville Blue Aces because uh, they're, 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 uh, they're, they're five and oh. Uh, and uh, so they, they, got, they got a big one this week. So it hasn't really, you know, uh, he, it's pretty much been, you know, how you feel about the plan. Um, you know, it's not really been into specifics. We'll probably talked more about uh, the Granville Blue Aces than we have the Buffalo Bills. No, no, no. The Granville Blue Aces are 5-0. Oh. No, but with you, uh, you're 2-0 oh and he's 5-0. Oh. No, that's the, that's the opponent. The Blue Aces are the opponent that he's playing this week. So, um, they, they, yeah, they got, they got a big win last week, a team that, you know, that was – could have went either way, and hopefully they're playing some of their better ball now. Um, they do have a couple losses, but yeah, that's been most of the talk this week was about Granville. Uh, no, no, no. Like I don't. <laughs> one, I don't know what you know. I don't know what they're running or what system they are, but you know. But that's what we've been talking about. You know. As far uh, you know. Um, not really football advice. Uh, we were just talking. Uh, we talked a little bit about my daughter's Taekwondo classes and how that's going and stuff. So she's a, she's a three-year-old and she's kicking some boards and stuff. So uh, that's good. And, and he likes the videos. So, you know, it's, yeah, so it's, uh, that's kind of pretty much the advice, you know, that, you know, he's given me this week. It's, it's, you, it's you, normal stuff. Coach, you guys have two short yardage stops in the game on Sunday, one in the game against the Patriots. I'm just curious, what's how are you guys able to get off the field so often on fourth and short? Well, I think it's a mentality. And I think, you know, I think the one thing that, that, that is definitely st stand out about our, our group of guys, and I think you can appreciate is, you know, basically the first, you know, drive of the game, if you will, it was basically a 20 play drive and we end up, you know, an inch away from a touchdown. And I think our guys' mentality, and there's a lot of second and one stops. There are a lot of third and one stops. Um, you know, and obviously, we, we got to do a better job of getting off the field when we have opportunities. Um, but I would say it's a mentality. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times, it's somebody beating somebody on a block. You know, it comes down to blocking, tackling, pad level. Uh, usually, you're going to have a body for a body um, in those situations. Um, and. You know, I, I think, you know, our guys play with really good effort and in getting to the ball, um, you know, the, and obviously that, you know, sometimes there's a lot of variables that can go into those plays. And, um, you know, I, I think it's a credit to our players um, that they really defend every blade of grass that's out there. You know, now it doesn't always work in our favor, but, you know, we're, we're going to get that effort. And I think they know and understand, you know, what we're trying to defend while we're out there.